Well, here we are at a, our very last chapter, chapter 11 in the course. Uh, I'm sure we're all looking forward to finishing this one up. And uh, it is a, it's a bit of a change from the rest of them, so I, I hope you like this. Um, our first topic is the, what's called the fundamental counting principle. So before we get right into it, let's just think of an example about food. Perhaps you're hungry, perhaps you're thinking about food right now. Uh, let's pretend you can choose one of three salads, either a Greek, Caesar, or pasta. And maybe what I'll do is when I'm writing this, I'm just going to use it a capital G, a capital C, and a capital P when I'm referring to those, and one of three entrees, so the main part of the meal, either a curry dish, or a hamburger, or a sushi, and I'll do lowercase for those ones, from a menu. How many possible combo meals of one salad and one entree can you order? So you go up there and you say, I'll get a combo, and you can pick a salad, and you can pick a, an entree. So I guess the first thing you would do is when you come up, uh, we, could, we could list them all, one way to, to list them all is to actually make a, what's called a tree diagram. So if we come up and we say, first of all, we have to pick what salad we're going to have. So there are three possible salads. So I'll go like this. And our three possible salads are the, the Greek salad, the Caesar salad, and then our pasta. And then once we've done that, then from those we can uh, pick our entree. So if you pick the Greek salad, from there you could either pick the, the curry, the hamburger, or the sushi. And if you picked the Caesar, you could pick the curry, the hamburger, or the sushi. It's a little bit squishy here. And then if you picked the pasta, again, you could pick the curry, the hamburger, and then the sushi. So thinking about all the different things that you ordered here, uh, if you follow down this path, that would be the, the Greek salad and then the curry. And then the Greek salad and then the hamburger the Greek salad and the sushi and then down the middle path it would be the Caesar with the curry, the Caesar with the hamburger, the Caesar with the sushi and, and so on and I think you see there's a pretty clear pattern. So now if we're going to answer the question, what was the question here? Uh, how many how many possible meals are there? So if we just count them the answer would be a nine meals. Pretty straightforward. Um, but this is a pain, isn't it? Like, what, what if there are 25 options for salad and 13 options for entree? It would be a, a pretty large tree diagram. What if there are also dessert options? What if there's just more than salad and entree? We need a better method. So here comes dun, da, 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 the fundamental counting principle. This says if one task can be performed A ways and another B way. So in our example, this would have been three, the first task would be choose a salad, and then the second task would be choose an entree, so that would have been three and three, and we found it was nine, so it doesn't, it's not too surprising, I hope, that the fundamental counting principle is you multiply them, okay? So it, here's an example, if you had seven salads, nine entrees, and five desserts, you could have 315 possible meals. Having to name them all would be a little bit of work, okay? So uh, through this um, chapter and chapter 11 you're going to see this pattern where it says your turn here's what I would recommend for the your turn how about uh, just watch and listen to me go through these examples first and uh, without writing it and then hit pause and then do it yourself so you get to see it once and then basically you uh, do what you had just watched me do so it says how many license plates are possible in Manitoba so in the province of Manitoba we have a six spots you'll notice we got one two three four five six spots and the first three spots are letters and then the last three are digits so how many letters are there in the English alphabet there are 26 so the the first choice would be or the first um, task would be choose a letter for the first spot. So there's 26 options. Now, assuming that we can reuse the letters, and when I look at uh, license plates, they are they do get reused. Like you could you could see a license plate that was like you know D D A four one six or something. So they do you reuse the letter. It's not like we can't use D again. So we can use all 26 again, and we can use all 26. Now, how many digits are there? Um, really, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but you also have zero. So there are ten digits, okay? And you got to be aware of these things. Like, can we use the zero? I think we can because I've seen license plates out there with with a zero in there, and we can reuse the digits. So you can multiply twenty six. Twenty. This is really twenty six cubed times ten cubed. Uh, in my calculator, that works out to seventeen million five hundred and seventy six thousand. 
So, you know, we're good to go for a little while. I don't think we have 17 million cars or current license plates. We only have a little bit over a million people, so I think we're all right. Question number two says, how many ways can a store manager hire for three positions given 12 candidates? Okay, so you got 12 people in the room, and I need, you know, I, I can hire three of you. So first of all, out of that group, I say, okay, I'm going to hire somebody. How, diff how many different ways could I hire a first person? 12 different ways, because there's 12 people there. Now, notice I'm not going to rehire the same person. So how many people are left when I make a, a second hire? There are 11 people left. Okay, how many for the third? 10, right? So this is for positions where I would say, okay, the first person maybe is washing the dishes, the last person, the second person is drying, and the third person is putting the dishes away. So they each have different tasks. So, and, and I'll, we'll talk a little bit more about where, um, where order makes a difference. So when I multiply that, I'll get 1, 3, 2, 0. How many outfits can you order if you have four choices of pants, five shirts, and six pairs of socks? 4 times 5 times 6, which is 120. Okay, so I hear this repetition idea. How many three-digit numbers can you make using the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 if repetition is allowed? Okay, so we've got three digits, so I'm going to kind of write out our three spots here. So in the first digit, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits there, so I could put any of those five in there. I'm allowed to repeat. So I, again, I can use any of those one, two, three, four, five. So it's five times five times five, which is equal to 125. Now, what if I can't repeat? Okay, what if I'm, I'm picking three digits, but if, if I pick two the first time, I can't pick two the second time, for example. Well, I can pick any of the five. So there's five ways of choosing the first digit. But now there's only going to be four ways of choosing the second digit and three, because I've used up one of them, okay? Um, so five times four times three is equal to 60. Okay. So moving on to the second page. Oh, I'll just pause. Sorry, I forgot about my idea here. So I did this once for you. What you should do, if you haven't written it in, now press pause and see if you can do the your turn, okay? And I will go on to the second page. All right, looking at uh, factorial notation, um, I, I think some of you have played around with calculator and maybe on your calculator you have this uh, weird thing that looks like an exclamation mark. And it wasn't just that the maker of those notes was really excited about factorial notation, it is actually involving that cool exclamation mark. So um, if we were to write 6 times 5 times 4, 3 times 2 times 1, we can write this as 6 factorial. So we say in English 6 factorial. So that symbol is the factorial symbol. And when do we use it? Well, here's an example. Six people must be arranged in a row. How many different ways can this be done? Well, uh, in when you place the first person, there are six people there, right? Uh, and now when you place the second person, you can't repeat. So the reason why it's not 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 and so on, it's because we can't repeat. We can't put down the same person twice. Right, when we're seating the people. So I've got, I've got you know, six chairs, you know, chair one, two, three, four, five, six, and I put different people in there. And so how many different ways can I do that? That is six factorial, okay? Um, let's do seven factorial. So seven factorial, you can either in your calculator do the seven times six times four, five times four times three times two, and you don't really have to do the one because it doesn't change anything. Or if you can find the factorial button on your calculator, boy, your life's gonna be a lot easier. On the TI-83, uh, it's a bit of a pain. Uh, you, put, you would put the 7 number down first. You would type in the 7. And then your next key press would be the math button. So there's a button, if I can spell, there's a button on your calculator called math. And then you want to move over to the right uh, two spots to where the probability uh, I guess it's a menu selection off to the right, because when you click on math, you get a bit of a menu there. And you go over to the right to probability, and then you want to pick option number four. Okay, so that's the sequence. I know, that's a bit of a pain. Uh, you may have a calculator that does factorial where it's a lot easier, and then that's great. Okay, so seven factorial, once you've done all that work, should be 5,040. Uh, okay, four factorial, try it on your calculator, 24. 18 factorial, it gets big real fast, 6.402 times 10 to the 15. I'm not going to write down every single digit. Okay, uh, so here is a definition uh, for how we define factorial notation. It is, all right, if you have n factorial, 
that is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 and so on until you get down to 1 right clearly you're not going to go to 0 because that would make everything 0 and we're not going to go negative so we start from n and we go downwards until we get to 1 and we multiply everything together now this symbol here we're so used to doing uh, you know as a set of all real numbers but in this case we've got this uh, n here and this n are the the natural numbers so the natural numbers are Another way to say it is the positive integers. Okay, so the the natural the set of natural numbers starts at one and goes up. Okay, uh, it's n doesn't include zero and doesn't include the negatives and it doesn't include decimals in between uh, these numbers. Okay, so um, we can't go like this. Okay, uh, that doesn't work for factorial notation. And also, this is interesting. This is zero factorial. And, and mathematicians like to have a discussion about this, but by general agreement, uh, mathematicians have decided that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Uh, if you have an extra half hour to kill or something, you might even want to look on YouTube. And there are a few kind of cool discussions where people say, here's why 0 factorial equals 1. And it's the kind of uh, discussions that mathematicians like to have. So anyways, that's just one to remember, 0 factorial is equal to 1. Okay, so here's another simplify, or I'm sorry, another your turn. So... Um, what I would recommend, watch me solve these and then hit pause and then see if you can do it on your own uh, without without my assistance afterwards. Okay, so if you're going to do 11 factorial divided by 9 factorial, boy, the worst case scenario is if you had a calculator that didn't do factorials and you'd have to do 11 times 10 all the way down to 1 and then you said divided by and then you did 9 all the way down to 1. But you'll see that it, there's actually a lot of cancelling out that can take place. So just this once, I'm going to write it out long. Uh, all divided by, and I'm going to start by my 9 right here. And I, I think you'll see why right away. Oh, getting tired. Okay, there we go. So you'll notice right away I've got the same 9s all the way down to 2s, right? So I can cancel those out, right? And remember when I cancel that out, what I'm meaning is I'm dividing the top and the bottom by all those factors. So I'm really just going to get a 1. So I get 11 times 10 all over 1. So it's just the same thing as 11 times 10. So it's 110. Okay. So from now on, I'm not going to write it that way though. That's just too much work. If I was to do this question again, I would say I would do 11 times 10 times 9 factorial all over 9 factorial. This is how I would show my work and then I would cancel this out and then say 110. Okay, that just makes my arm tired. This is the way to go. Okay, so let's try B now. It's a little bit different. Now the larger ones in the denominator, right? So you want to start with the whichever one is larger. So I'm going to start with 7 times 6 times and then I stop. Oh yeah, that's the one that's the same. So instead of continuing to go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I stop and do 5 factorial. The numerator is 5 factorial. I cancel that out. So really what I've got is a 1 on the top and a 7 times 6 on the bottom. So I'm going to get 1 over 42. Okay. Remember when I cancel that out, it's not like I get a 0 there because you know something divided by self is equal to 1. So you can think of it as a, as a 1 on the top and a 1 on the bottom. So it's 1 over 42. Okay, so part C. Oh, now instead of numbers, we've got actual... Um, uh, variables in here. So remember our principle before is that we took whichever numerator or denominator was larger and then we worked down until we got to the one that was smaller. So which one's larger? n is larger than n minus 2. So I'm going to start with the top and I'm going to go n times n minus 1 times, oh and now we're at that n minus 2 so I'm going to say n minus 2 factorial. Okay, so this is still equivalent to that. I've just stopped it at here and said that now this is n minus 2 factorial, all divided by n minus 2 factorial, and I think you see where we're going from here. I can cancel those out, and I get n times n minus 1, which I like it in, in factored form. If you really feel the need, you could do this. That's okay, too. All right, uh, let's look at part D. Which is the larger, the numerator or the denominator? The numerator is because it's n plus 1, which is larger than n. So uh, similarly, I'll start with n plus 1, and then I go down 1, and I'll say, oh, now this is n factorial. In fact, I don't need the parentheses on this one. So I'll say n factorial, all divided by n factorial. Cancel that out, and there we are. We got e is equal to n plus 1. 
Um, going over to number two, it says prove that five factorial is equal to three factorial, or five factorial minus three factorial is equal to nineteen times three factorial. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with just the left hand side, kind of like our, our good old proving our identities, um, and I'm gonna say, okay, this five factorial, hmm, five factorial is the same thing as five times four times three factorial minus three factorial, right? So I'm just uh, we're here. There, I'm going to work with the left hand side just for now. Um, now I've got a three factorial here and a three factorial here. It seems to me I can factor out a three factorial, can't I? If I say three factorial times twenty minus one, does that make sense? So uh, here I have two terms, right? Um, here's here's one term because they're all multiplying together that constitutes a term there's my second term out of each of these terms I'm factoring out a 3 factorial right so when I factor this out I'm left with 5 times 4 and that's where the 20 comes when I factor out a 3 factorial I'm dividing this by 3 factorial I get 1 so this is equal to 3 factorial times 19 which is the same thing as saying 19 times 3 factorial which is equal to the right hand side there's one way we can do our, our good old proof Okay, uh, number three is a solve question. Okay, so now very similar to this kind of stuff that we've been doing over here. In fact, look at this, it looks very much the same. So we'll start it off the, the same route. We'll go uh, n times n minus one times n minus two factorial all over n minus two factorial. What's different from our previous one is that this is a, an equation, not just an expression. It's got the equal sign. We'll cancel this part out, and now we get n times n minus 1 is equal to 30. Now there's two ways to go on this question at, at this point. Uh, I'm of the, hey, let's see if we can take a shortcut idea, and I'm thinking, well, what does this look like? This is a number, and 1 less than that is equal to 30. Hmm, seems to me, what's, what's one number and another number, 1 less than that, that when you multiply them, you get 30. It seems to me that 6 times 5 is equal to 30, so n is going to be equal to 6. Okay, so there, there's one method. Some of you might go, oh, Mr. Spicer, that's just not very mathematical. Help me make it more mathy. Okay, okay, I don't know why I slipped into some odd accent there. So let's say if we we're to make this uh, in a more uh, mathematical way, I could say, well, let's multiply this out. n squared minus n is equal to 30. So I get n squared minus n minus 30 is equal to 0, and that is our good old friend, the polynomial, the trinomial. And then we can factor this, and we get, it looks so familiar, doesn't it? So we, because we have a, what, a minus 6 and a plus 5 is equal to 0, and then our two answers is n can be equal to negative 5, or n is equal to 6. Uh, but... Here's our problem, and, and you might say, hey, this is better because we've got two answers. Um, n is equal to negative 5. If I go back to my original question, okay, so here's my original question. Can I have a negative 5 uh, in the factorial? And then that's, what, that's why earlier on we said, in general, we define factorial notation for n has to be a natural number. So a natural number does not include 0, or, well, actually, it does not include the negative values for sure. So we're going to say, can't do that one. So we're, if you're doing this on an exam, what you want to do is cross that out. Okay? And I'm thinking, actually, if they're going to be giving a mark for finding the extraneous root and then rejecting it, that actually number two would be a better answer here. But um, really, number one is excellent because you get the answer so quickly. Let's go on to our next page. So now we're talking about permutations. Okay, so um, permutations, the number one thing to remember is in permutations, order is important. Okay, and oh, actually, I just you know, I could have highlighted that right there. Order is important. So, an arrangement of a set of objects in which the order is important is called a permutation. Here's an example How many ways can you arrange four people sitting on a bench is a permutation, while how many ways can you choose a group of four from the class is not, right? So, if I just said, Hey, you four are together in a group, A, B, C, D, it doesn't matter what order 
that I pick you. You're just a member of the group. But if I go and, and I set you down on a bench, right? So here's the bench, and there's a first spot, a second spot, a third spot, and a fourth spot. Order does matter, okay? If I was picking people, and if I said you're going to be on a committee, I don't. I think I just misspelled committee just horribly there. Let's try again. If you were on a committee, uh, you know, to try to teach Mr. Spicer how to spell better. If you're on a committee um, where everyone has an equal role, order wouldn't matter, right? But if you were on something and you had to be, you had to pick a, say, a president, right? And then you had to pick a vice president, and then maybe uh, an executive. You know, the three people. So if you had a, a committee of three people versus if you had a president and a vice president and an executive, this one order matters, right? This one would be a permutation. This one would not be a permutation. Okay, let's see if I can get this zoom to work for me again here. Okay, uh, now here's the formula for it. It's kind of cool. If you have n items and r items are taken and arranged, Okay, so um, here is our formula, and the n uh, and the r uh, are written. So here is uh, on our first example. If we have seven books, and we're going to pick three of them, uh, that's where you write that. So it's a it's actual a subscript seven, and then you write the p because it's a permutation, and then a three. So usually in English we say n things taken r at a time. Okay. Uh, then this is the formula n factorial divided by n minus r factorial so for our example you've got seven books okay seven books are lying in a pile and you have a display case and you're going to arrange three of those books and order matters because there's a first place a second place and a third place right um, let's let's use our old way of thinking about this so in our first spot we would we would have any of the seven books to put there so i would put seven in my first one in the second spot i would have I, I can't place the same book again, so there's six different ways I can put the second book down. Now, out of those seven books, two of them are, are already put down, so I have five left to put in my last spot. So using the fundamental counting principle, it's 7 times 6 times 5, which is 210. Pretty straightforward. Using this brand new formula here, we get 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 3 factorial. So you see how when we cancel those out, we get the exact same number. I'm sure some of you are thinking, Mr. Spicer, I really like the fundamental counter principle because it just is so much simpler than all this stuff. But of course you realize this is a much more uh, robust method because even though it's more complicated for an easy example, it can handle really big numbers and you might have trouble with the fundamental counting principle. So let's try the your turn again. So I'm going to do these examples for you. Evaluate uh, the number of permutations of six things taken four at a time. So using the formula, I'm going to get six factorial all over six minus four factorial, which is the same thing as six factorial over 2 factorial, which if we remember how we did this, it would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial, all over 2 factorial, and then the 2 factorials cancel each other out. So it's really 6 times 5 times 4 times 3, which is 360 if I did my math right. Okay, so now here's a solving for an equation. n things taken 2 at a time is equal to 30. So there are 30 ways to pick two things out of a group of n items, and we don't know the n. So uh, n factorial all over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 30. Hey, I think we've done this question already, haven't we? So it's like n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial all over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 30. So that cancels each other out. I'm looking at this and go, oh yeah, one number is n, and the next number is one smaller than it. What are two numbers when multiplied together that are 30, where one's one bigger than the other? It's 6 and 5, so n is going to be equal to 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, let's do the next one. Now, this is still an unknown number of items, and I'm going to take three of them, and apparently there's 120 different ways to, to place them. So I'm going to say n factorial all over n uh, minus 3 factorial is equal to 120. So um, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times 
n minus 3 factorial. Okay, so while that announcement was going, I just kept on proceeding. Now, we're almost done. At, now, similar to this question here, like I said, we could multiply this out, and then, you, you know, this would give us a trinomial. If we multiply this out, we're going to have something n cubed, n squared, and set it to zero, and then factor it. And, and we do have those skills to factor. Uh, but let's just look at this. We want three numbers that are dis descending that is equal to 120. I don't think it takes too much time to realize, and, and doing a little plugging and play in your calculator, or even just mentally thinking it out, that 6 times 5 times 4 is going to be equal to 120. 6 times, like 5 times 4 is 20, 20 times 6 is 120, so I'm going to say n is equal to 6. And I highly recommend this route rather than multiplying it all out, subtracting 20 from both sides, and then doing the factoring and all that business. I think that's a lot more work. Okay, last question as people are wanting to come into chemistry. It says, if you have 12 basketball players and 7 must be arranged on the bench. So we're arranging them on the bench, so order does make a difference here. So we're going to say 12 things taken 7 at a time. So that's going to be equal to 12 factorial all over 12 minus 7 factorial. So that will be 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Oh, actually, 12 minus 7 is 5, isn't it? So it's going to be under 5 factorial. So i got to keep going on this one. i got to go times 6 times 5 factorial. That's going to be equal to a really big number, 3991680. And there's our answer. Okay, so uh, there's your homework. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in class.